Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So just by quick way of introduction, right? My name is Julio Artiaga, Solution Architect for Microfocus. Been around the industry for about roughly 22 years, you know, following the, the trends and the way things are happening in the industry today. And specifically, today we're gonna to be talking about model-based testing, but we're gonna to touch on a couple of very good topics. So just by way of a quick agenda, some of the things we'll be talking about is, what is the industry saying about testing tools in general? How does that affect or impact value stream management? We'll talk about what value stream management is, what it brings to the table, how it affects DevOps as well, right? So you can see it's a pretty big conversation, but then we're gonna pare it down and focus it to a DevOps type of conversation and ultimately touch on model-based testing, what it is, what it does, uh, what are the benefits, what are some of the challenges, and then we'll certainly wrap it up with uh, plenty of time for uh, some Q&A. But just to kick, th kick things off, I wanna kind of hit you with a question, right? As far as quality management, what do you think customers feel the most pain or they're the most satisfied? So think about this, look at the screen, and I'm going to take a quick poll of where you think the most pain is. And I'll give you a couple of seconds for that. OK, I think the answer is going to surprise you. Let's look at where the most dissatisfaction occurs, and that is with traditional testing tools and practices. As a matter of fact, um, you know, when we look at the, the, uh, a survey or a, uh, a really a study that we did through Forrester right, a couple, uh, last year in 2021, we approached about 316 customers across different industries, retail, finance, uh, healthcare, and this is what they told us. Most of the satisfaction is with traditional testing tools and practices that they use today. Right. So if you look at, you know, the, the higher side of things, you know, 56 percent of the, that dissatisfaction or, or I should say 56 percent are satisfied with their processes. Forty two percent relatively satisfied with with uh, the speed of testing. But notice what happens on the lower end. Right? There's not a lot of satisfaction with things like visibility of testing, the visibility of results and the status of quality. Uh, reusability of testing assets, 34% satisfaction only with, with uh, test management tools, and even lower 33% with test execution tools, right? So there's quite a bit of dissatisfaction um, with what customers own today. And these are, these are leaders in the quality testing space. They're using modern tools, they're using AI solutions, and they're just not being, their, their needs of the business are not being uh, addressed. Right. And, you know, this is leading to a lot of questions, you know, the development leaders, the folks that are really responsible for this application delivery lifecycle are starting to ask questions that are a lot more focused. Right. So things like, where is the quality? How do I ensure upstream quality or delivery to avoid rework and redesign? Right. So the alarm bells are going off. Right. Customers are noticing that, you know, there's a lot of rework. There's a lot of things, a lot of bottlenecks that are holding back proper delivery. And that delivery, right, has to have value. So we're not talking about just throwing products over the wall and hoping that there is, is some kind of successful testing and things are delivered in a timely manner. No, is it valuable to customers? What is the potential of inaction, right? So that's that second bullet point. What happens if I do not uh, deliver value to the customer? You know, what is the impact and ultimately the cost of doing nothing and failing in those things? How do I couple those tools together, right? So many of you on this call live this on a daily basis. You have a wide catalog of solutions and tools. How do you integrate them together? How do you make the most of that investment? How do you make sure that you know, the data is flowing properly from one tool chain to the other? And how do I automate? Where do I apply AI and automation to my software development lifecycle, right? Automation, we've been talking about for years, right? But you know, am I applying the right automation in the right place, right? So that I'm, I'm maximizing my return on investment in, in, in the solutions that I use. How do I ensure that my security is is, is uh, handled properly, right? That I have a robust application. Productivity, what are the critical paths in development? So applications, you know, we live this every day. Applications are simply just becoming more complex, whether by design or the underlying technologies or, you know, having to care for, for uh, legacy applications, right? How do we maximize our testing efforts and make sure that we're processing the right paths in order to deliver these applications. But we wanna do this quickly, right? Without sacrificing the, the, uh, the quality that we're responsible for. So we need to have agility built into the, the uh, solution. 
We also need to have a proper strategy that aligns our business objectives, right? You've seen this, right? Again, many of us on this call have, have been through those pain points where we deliver something or we think we're working on the right strategy. And in fact, it is completely misaligned with the expectations of the business, right? Now, when those expectations aren't met, do we have the right resource even in, in the first place, right? They are utilizing the right folks at the right place to deliver this value. And are we really reducing risk for these systems? So these are the questions that a lot of organizations are asking, right? Rightfully, right? Because they're noticing the alarm bells going off, right? There's a lot of time wasted. There's a lot of resources wasted. There's a lot of money wasted. So a lot of the industry is starting to think in terms of value stream management. Value stream management is a way of managing application delivery so that you're analyzing and predicting the resources, the risk, the waste, and having a standard value that you can produce as part of your workflow, right? So in other words, you're going from strategy to delivery and you're achieving it in a superior fashion. You're managing quality, you're reducing bottlenecks, you have visibility into all the individual moving pieces of your application. Once in a while, in fact, I jokingly say, well, you know, when we talk about delivering value, I always think about somebody that needs transportation. They need to get from point A to point B, right, for a doctor's appointment or something like that. Well, I can deliver a cement truck that will get them to from point A to point B. However, that is not value. What they really need is either a motorcycle or a bicycle or a passenger car, right? So delivering something, throwing it over the wall, as the saying goes, does not necessarily equate to value. So value stream management in action, right, when we talk about, you know, all the different moving pieces of the application lifecycle, this is where we'd like to be, right? This is the ideal picture. We picture ourselves going through this process you see up on top where we have a series of requirements. There is a business strategy. We go through analysis, from analysis to approval, all these different gates, definition, the design, the coding, the testing, validation, ultimately out to release and deployment. Now on these steps, right, in each one of these, we want to have clear business objectives. In other words, things that we know that, that are planned, right? That we know that we can deliver. We wanna have the correct strategy. We do a little bit of work and we select the right features and we go through a, a backlog analysis and the product owners get on there and, and they, they set the priorities of the epics and features and things that need to go out the door. And we have this great design and we're, we've, we, we're managing the risk. Now I'm doing the air quotes silently, right? Because you know we're managing the risk or we think we're managing the risk. So just keep that in mind. Then we're providing the optimum resources, automation, right? That's a big part of this. We wanna automate this process. And we, we deliver some quality to the application. There's no rework, there's no design, or at least we think, and ultimately we deliver and we have a, a happy customer. Well, unfortunately, this is the reality oftentimes, right? This is where we start running into major problems. We start seeing things like conflicting business objectives and not everybody's on the same page. Not everybody's working off the sheet music as, or the same sheet music as I like to say. Wrong strategy. So now you're waiting, right? You notice there's a lot of red waiting tags here because you're, you're waiting, you're reworking things, you're backtracking. You're redoing a lot of things that should only have been done one time. Right? So that's a waste. Wasting resources, wasting time. Um, you know, you're selecting the wrong feature set. So going back to my product owner, the product owner is selecting the wrong feature set. They're setting priorities and putting things in sprints that don't belong there. They're, they're uh, again, reworking, right? Rescheduling, reworking, wrong specifications, and so on and so forth. So ultimately, you're failing to deliver value in a timely fashion. You're missing a lot of these things because you don't have visibility. You don't have insight. Your indicators, right? You see on the right-hand side, all these indicators for value, velocity, risk, you know, the, the, the amount of, of workflow that you can process, um, really miss it. There's no visibility into these different items. So this is where customers need to look at things from a value stream perspective, right? Collect these metrics, right? So now you wanna have visibility into cycle time, right? How, you know, how much time am I spending? Where am I spending my time, first of all, right? Who's working on what? These are classic, uh, metrics that we, we we know and love. We've been using them for years, but we need to be able to see these things holistically across the board, as opposed to in a silo, right? For functional testing, performance testing, or portfolio management. No, we we need to see these things um, holistically, right? What is the lead time? How much time is it taking from the request all the way through initiation when things start getting worked on? And then what is my throughput? So 
a lot of us on this call, right, we're very technical. We talk about throughput when it comes to network traffic. It talks about transaction response times and, and trans transaction rates. Well, this is the human factor. How much throughput am I seeing as part of my workflow? What is the work in progress? How much work is left? How much longer do I have? How much runway do I have before I really need to ramp things up? Right? And what is the quality of this code? Remember, we're not, we're not sacrificing quality. That's a very important uh, part of this. And we're maximizing the ROI because ultimately we wanna get to this, right? So now with that visibility in mind, having insight into all these different moving pieces, right? I can see where you know, the right strategy was selected, I can see where the right feature set was selected, right? Now, you know, I have insight into the things that are going to cause headaches and problems and issues. And, you know, this is a feedback mechanism as well because it's a learning experience. This is going to give me the insight to see the things that are potential roadblocks that I can take care of and become something that is not repeated, right? We talk about repeatability in, in, in our application delivery. We don't want the failures to be repeatable, obviously, right? So those, that's the kind of visibility that we're looking for. So, you know, you might have some wait time, but that's gonna be drastically reduced. Now you're gonna be bringing the right folks to the right part of the project, to the right uh, circumstances. Your resources are going to be optimized. Your handoffs are gonna be, the wait time for any handoffs is going to be drastically reduced. And then you're gonna be testing at the right time in the right place. You'll be able to track the things that need to be tested that we're gonna be talking about shortly, right? So it won't be an ad hoc process of just grab everything known of the application and just throw it over the wall and test it and hope for the best. It's gonna be a very organized, very standardized process as we're gonna be talking about uh, shortly. Now, when we talk about, we've been talking about value stream management, right? But value stream management also has an impact on the future of application delivery. So things like DevOps, right, are a very important part of this. Specifically, value stream management now has, you know, incorporates a lot of artificial technologies into it, right? So it complements and it helps integrate all your existing assets that you have out there in your ecosystem, right? So when we talk about AI in value stream, we're letting the software, the platform do a lot of the work for us, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, if you think back to in the past, you know, there was a lot of human involvement. There was a lot of uh, find the needle in the haystack, right? Hoping that to find the, the issue or the problem that might cause a, a, a headache down the line. But value stream management, we wanna incorporate a proper AI capabilities into this across the application delivery life cycle. So starting with something like functional testing, for example, we wanna incorporate the ability to work with applications in a visual manner. In other words, let AI recognize the objects on an application, whether it's a mobile application or it's a web application. It should be able to recognize the objects without dependency on the underlying uh, frameworks, right? So it shouldn't be tied to a specific Java framework. It shouldn't be tied to a specific uh, class ID or anything like that. A search function should be a magnifying glass. It is a search function. AI knows what it needs to do with a search function and can respond appropriately. In terms of performance engineering, right? Performance engineering used to be a very technical endeavor, find the needle in the haystack, right? You pull out a whole bunch of logs and monitor data and you start searching for that needle and you hope that something stands out. Today, AI is an integral part of performance engineering because it helps you find the patterns, the anomalies. Where did things start to really become a problem during your performance test? So now, you know, things will stand out and they really stand out from, from different, um, different context, right? Because it's not just, I have a problem with a server or I have a problem with a database. I have a problem with a business transaction. So we're not just impacting things from a technology perspective. There's an impact to the end user. If, you know, we're all consumers here on this call. So when I log into an application, that login takes 30 seconds. That is a problem as a consumer. I am not happy with the vendor. I'm not happy with the, with, with the retailer. And it becomes an issue as far as reputation and, and really a costly uh, problem. So that AI helps you, helps point you in the right direction, looking for those anomalies, looking for that needle, pointing it out and telling you exactly where you need to work. Now, you know, it, it, it bears repeating that security is one of the most important things, obviously, right? A secure application uh, is something that is integral from the beginning, from the moment that application becomes a concept security should be part of that ecosystem. So security testing, again, that AI tech capabilities and technology will help you determine 
what needs to be tested, what are the potential problems in the code, right? Code scanning, um, zero day attack potential, and so on and so forth, right? Looking for those patterns, pointing them out for you. You know, after all, I always like to say, you know, software is something you pay for. So let it work for you. Let the AI technology find those things for you. So as far as agile planning and development, right? You know, this is also uh, uh, pretty big because AI can help you to look for those uh, different defects and user stories and epics and features and programs and things that can be managed a little bit better across teams. They can be delivered in a more efficient fashion, right? It looks for, you know, are you getting the right ROI based on your development efforts? Quality manage management as you're running tests, as you're running you know, your, your functional tests and your performance tests, and you're managing the quality of the application, right? From a, from a higher perspective due to the functional and performance and security testing, right? It's gonna, you, you wanna look for those risky parts of the applications, things that, you know, builds that are not exactly really working efficiently, right? So when it comes to your continuous delivery and uh, continuous integration, you wanna look for those patterns of, 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 of um, potential potholes, I call them, right? Where something ran, it ran successfully, but there is a history of problems in the past. Do you, you really wanna rely on this 100%? No, you, wanna, you want AI to point these things out so you can have special focus on these particular parts of the application and really make sure that you are delivering the, the proper uh, perspective. And then project and portfolio management, even that has AI built in, right? You know, it has that capability of looking for, again, those anomalies, those patterns, those things that should be managed, those projects that should be managed and the potential what if scenarios um, from portfolio perspective. And then once your application is deployed, service management, right? Looking for those patterns, again, of failures, those potential risks, those potential bottlenecks, because that's gonna give you that feedback mechanism right back to the pre-production, the testing, and the planning of the next release cycle, right? So it is a cyclical approach. It's something that has a large impact. Ultimately, when you look at that picture, you can say that everyone owns quality, right? So the days of, you know, there being a QA team, they're separate, they worry about their, their, their silos and their defects and, you know, completely separate, no responsibility with any other moving part of the application delivery life cycle, those days are gone, right? Because today, everybody owns quality. Everybody is part of a DevOps pipeline. So that DevOps pipeline, right, usually starts with code management, right? That means that code is committed uh, to a, a repository, whether it's Git, whether it's GitHub, right? There is going to be code committed by your developers. That DevOps system, you know, includes a build system, a pipeline build system, right? So that build, uh, you know, I'm going to use the term generically because a build can really include your functional testing, performance testing, uh, working with your environment, right? Standing up environments, Docker images and containers and, and, and things of that sort, right? But now that code is in a build system. Once that build executes, then it goes to an artifact repository, right? So these are your executables, your, your jar files, your libraries that represent executable items. And then we're going to testing, right? And as you can see here, right, as I said, testing is a very broad topic because, you know, testing will include your functional testing, UFT, Unified Functional Testing, Load Runner, Selenium, um, Fortify for security, JUnit uh, for, for unit testing, testing G again for your unit testing. But testing is a huge part of this because it provides the feedback mechanism, right? Then ultimately it goes to provisioning upon successful deployment and finally to operations monitoring, right? So your application at this point is in production, but it doesn't end there, right? This is cyclical because then you're gonna have the next release. Production is going to feed back, right? One of the tenets of, of, uh, of, uh, of Agile and DevOps is really to fail as quickly as possible. Right? You don't wanna wait for that failure down the line. So this is gonna be that feedback mechanism. So in terms of Testing challenges, right? When it comes to testing as part of that delivery pipeline or that DevOps pipeline that we just looked at, customers are facing various challenges. One of those testing automations require technical skills. We've all seen this, right? And it's normal. It's perfectly, perfectly okay, right? Because we've we've talked about shift left, we talk about shift right. So shift left is usually your developers uh, or your dev testers, they work in environments and IDEs like Visual Studio or Eclipse and languages they're familiar with, like uh, JavaScript. But then you also have 
the the non-technical or the business analyst. And you know, typically one of the challenges is that they cannot effectively participate. The business should not be uh, responsible for working with Java language, for example, right? It's just not part of their domain. Automation frameworks usually lack management features as well. So there's hundreds, or I would even venture to say thousands of different frameworks. And how do you manage this? the patching, the updates? You know, you, you have to revisit hundreds and thousands of different scripts. So the maintenance becomes a major factor. No connection to the business. So there's a, there's a disconnect between what the business needs and what the technical or the QA team delivers, right? And usually the only connection traditionally has been a defect. Right, so you know, as part of the of the delivery life cycle, there's a defect out there, and that's what everybody knows. That's their communication point. So you lose a lot of information in between those two teams, and then understanding, or or rather, under testing or over testing. And this is common. I've seen this many, many times in the industry, of different customers where you know they either under test, so they just test what they think, and again, I'm doing your air quotes. Um, they test what they think needs to be tested, and they just you know, throw the application over the wall, as I like to say, using that as the as the metric. Or they over-test. Going back, remember, to VSM, Value Stream Management, over-testing. That means that you're repeating things that do not need to be repeated. You know, tests that already ran, they're successful, they're confirmed, but you're wasting cycles on those things. So no management, no government, little collaboration, no alignment to business, and the efficiency is varied. In other words, it's a variable and it shouldn't be. You want to be able to measure things that are standardized. How do we fix these things? Well, one of the ways we do that is with model-based testing. What is model-based testing? Model-based testing, simply stated, is a testing technique in which the test cases are part of a model that describe the functional aspects of an artifact or an application under test. Right. So these functional things, you know, they can be represented graphically, and these functional units can be things, for example, like the login. Right, of an application or you know purchasing something right uh, adding it to the to the basket and checking out and, and uh, confirming that the transaction was successful and entering credit card and then logging off right those are typical units that we see out there model-based testing ideal characteristics which you define okay what are the things that we look for well it needs to be reusable it needs to be something that i can uh, uh, break down into components link them together and make them into reusable test cases, right? So I'm not reinventing the wheel. Remember, cutting waste, that's part of the value stream management uh, uh, methodology, right? Cutting out waste, reducing wait time, and we should be able to reuse and leverage existing business process models, right? Data should be abstracted and parameterized. Simply stated, it means that, you know, I shouldn't have static data as part of these models, part of, part of this test. So when I create a data model with all these different units, the data is independent, right? It's parameters that are, that are provided uh, as input. You know, and these could be different data sets as the test runs, and these could be driven by your test data management solution as well. The environments should also be abstracted as well, right? So, you know, a, a particular business model should not be something that's linked to the to the uh, uh, you know the, the pre-production environment or the development environment or the dev test environment. It should be independent of that, just for purposes of, of uh, scalability. Systems should be able to help quickly identify units components that are already in the library. In other words, look for uh, or really avoid duplication of effort, right? So think of it as a library, a collection of these units that are reusable and that I have insight to determine, okay, are they being used as part of a workflow already? Or do I have to add something um, that I might be missing? Should support all types of testing artifacts that underpin the components, functional, performance, security, manual, right? So manual and testing, for example, you should be able to use an automation tool like a, a UFT, or if the manual component or manual unit, that should be something that's part of the ecosystem. Should be able to track this um, metadata and component model levers, which drives the uh, strategies. In other words, I should be able to select all the different strategies. It's, do I want to test things from an agile perspective? Do I want to, in other words, test things that have defects linked to them? Or do I want to select everything that's in that particular workflow and run that? It should have path analysis strategies to ensure the right coverage. So going back to what I just said, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, but have coverage where it applies. Maybe not necessarily everything under the sun. Maybe I just want to test a particular path, but I want to know when that path runs, when that path is executed, 
I want to know that it was successful or failed. And I want to know whether it was even missed, right? Maybe it was missed and it was something that I should have tested, right? Encourage reuse of entire models, inherit results from change impact analysis. So in other words, I should be able to get the results from the execution of the data model and use that to further improve the data model. And it should also be tool agnostic. So I should be able to run this either directly from the platform or perhaps run it from an automation tool or CIC platform and version control. Now, model-based testing from a much higher level, 60,000 foot view, we're really talking about two sides of what this process looks like, right? On the one hand, on the one hand there's the design realm where you know, this is where you can take something like a, a, a business process model, right? A BPMN file, right? Many organizations use these from uh, other solutions that produce the BPMN file and then can import those into the data model. And that generates your different unit um, of the application that need to be tested or should be tested, right? But this goes through an analysis, right? You know, selecting the paths, right? So that's the second uh, box that you have here. You have a path. And that path could be, again, and I have a very short video in a few seconds, but this is a path that could be either test everything that's in this model or select manually certain paths or select paths that have defects and other selection criteria, right? So you decide what are the different paths that need to be tested, right? And then the execution realm is with the actual runs of these different tests. But of course, the data is, is once again, it's abstracted. So the data is not tied uh, statically to the test. It, it is input, it is parameterized. Now let's talk about some of the challenges, right? With model-based testing. Some of the challenges is that it does require a little bit of discipline, right? It requires a mature way of thinking about your testing, right? It is a, it is a, a change in testing, right? You're changing your thinking. Now you're thinking in terms of models and assets and the scripts are kind of now secondary, right? Because the scripts are linked to the units. A unit could be either manual or it could be automated with something like UFT. So your script now has become secondary. It's really about the model when you start looking at challenges and the business process must be understood. So you really do need to understand the, from a business perspective, what are the different functional units of your application that need to be tested, that need to be put through a process. However, the benefits far outweigh any challenges, right? Because now you're gonna reuse a lot of the stuff that you have, right? And the impact is gonna be, uh, you know, reduce time, reduce cost, right? Doing more with less. I mean, who, who doesn't want to do that? Right? That's been something that's been an industry, um, you know, phrase from the very beginning, from the early days of testing. Do more with less, automate more, run more, right? Extend the reach of testing to non-technical users. So the business, right? Remember the business, one of the challenges, the business is non-technical. They do not want to work with languages. They want to work with a business process. Right? They want to work tr with transactions. So now the business can work with these units because now the, the business, when working with a model, they see a transaction or they see, an, they see a component, login, add to cart, uh, enter credit card, log off, right? These are components. These are not, you know, of course there is technical stuff behind the scenes, but they're not seeing that. Allows a reduction in test cases to verify functionality while maintaining sufficient coverage. So we're delivering in a context of a sprint, two weeks, four weeks, you need to deliver to the business. Sometimes you cannot test every single thing under the sun, but this lets you make well-educated uh, 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 suggestions or selections, really I should say, for what needs to be tested for this application to be stable and viable in order to get it out the door. Reduce the number of test cases, reduce the execution time, right? So now, you know, going back to the value stream management, eliminating a lot of the wait time, cutting out the waste, right? This is gonna help you with that because it's gonna reduce the number of test cases. You'd be surprised, a lot of reinvention of the wheel, I'll call it, right? That's, that's out there. A lot of uh, organizations are just have the same exact process and tests uh, repeated. So it really adds a lot of, of, a lot of uh, problems and reduce the human intuition errors, right? You know, as humans, we like to think, well, I think I know what I need to test. This eliminates that because now it's standardized, more resilient to change, lending itself to fitting better with agile and DevOps practices. So this is a modern approach. It's not something that is, you know, we're not 
forcing something into the way you do business today. It's a natural approach that really works very nicely with your existing agile and DevOps practices. And it could really determine what should be automated in one order, right? Should I automate this? No, maybe I can leave it out. So this is an actual, this is a short movie of what the interface looks like. And this is what, what it's doing is you can see the U for unit, right? These are various moving parts of our retail application. It's a shopping site. So these are individual units for product search, logging in. Then you see on the bottom there, that's a model within a model. So you can make a call to an entire model within it itself contains um, other units and it also has a decision tree, right? So that's the, the general structure. You can see it's a canvas. The next thing is you can select different paths. So one of the paths, for example, you can select is full coverage simple. This is going to generate tests for every single path. For example, you see those highlighted on the right-hand side for every path of that diagram. However, you might have a different strategy. It might be a simple sanity test where basically it just grabs, you know, the unique single one-time path, uh, each you know path just once, right, for a sanity test. And as I said earlier, you know, briefly mentioned that you can have other strategies like an agile strategy that basically looks at things in your agile space, defects um, and other criteria that, that you know, really does drive the things that need to be tested. Obviously you have a defect outstanding out there. That is a path that needs to be tested in order to respond to that uh, potential defect. So model-based testing at MicroFocus, right? We're one of the market leaders in that because of the experience, right? We, we came out with business process testing, component testing in uh, September of 2004. Um, and that was a game changer, right? Because that let us create components, or really I should say the business, to work with components to put together these, these, uh, these pieces into larger tests. So it really represented the initial meeting of the minds of the technical and non-technical, everybody working off the same page and that we bring that today to model-based testing. So the business is able to see components as we just saw a few seconds ago and the, the technical folks can fill in those components, the details behind those. February of 2022, we released a product called model-based testing, which you just saw an example of that short film as part of the Value Edge platform. Value Edge platform is our value stream management platform and it includes functional testing area, right? Which incorporates the, the um, uh, the, the model-based testing. Now, we can take that even further, right? Because model-based testing, when we talk about the business and the non-technical folks, we have incorporated something called AI codeless as part of model-based testing. What does that mean? It means that you can create a script using AI and it's going to create the script and generate it, right? Using very simple human readable statements. So, you know, you, you see here an example of a, of a statement, click on the uh, a demo text, click on profile, type user ID into the username input field, type user password into the password field, and so on, right? These are things that when they're captured, they're readable, and this is very easy for the business to work on. But more importantly, right, this is using AI. So you're not relying on the user to understand Java classes or um, JavaScript frameworks, not at all, right? This is recognizing objects on the screen as they, as they appear on the screen on a web application. So let's revisit that first slide that I showed you, right? Satisfaction with traditional testing tools and practices, right? Or I should say the lack of satisfaction, right? So everything that we've spoken about, right? We spoke about value stream management. We spoke about DevOps and how DevOps relate to value stream management. And then we ultimately talk about the testing side of DevOps and value stream management really addresses every one of these points, right? So if we choose a few of these like process, speed of testing, level of automation, right? Model-based testing and, and, and uh, VSM really gives us insights to improve our process, to increase our speed of testing, hence the deliverable of the application, have better insight into the level of automated testing. How much automation have we done, right? And you know, can the business be part of this? The, the effort to re, required to maintain tests drastically reduced because now duplication is a reduced factor, right? It doesn't have an, an impact. Visibility into the results and quality status, reusability of testing assets, right? Built in part of the solution. Test management tool, of course, that's all part of the VSM solution. You know, we can run these tests, we can collect results, we can summarize them, and then 
testing tool execution, of course, is something that is built in as well, either through the AI code list or something like an automated solution like Contini. So thank you as part of this presentation, this, this uh, code that you see here on the screen, this will take you to, to, um, to the main microfocus uh, site for more information. I definitely would love to talk to you more detail about some of this, uh, some of these different areas. So certainly do reach out to myself or to Jennifer um, at microfocus and we can certainly schedule something um, with you.